work on this A shape position. So we're gonna start here. My legs are gonna be in an A shape, and your training partner's gonna be right here with your hips. So we know what his goal is, right? His goal, for the most part, is to control my hips, and more importantly, to control this bottom knee. So what I want you guys to focus on doing, when his head's low like this and he's around your waist, is I wanna keep a strong pulse with my right hand. Okay, so if he goes to grab my wrist, which he will, he gives an opening on that side where I can free up my right knee line. So one more time, that's a subtlety, but that's, that's really where I, uh, all the, the details are. So I'm here. I know that I can't get my knee up unless I get my hand on the mat. Now obviously, if you take a quick snapshot of Sway's hips and my hips, whose hips are higher? Sway's hips are higher. So he's gonna dominate the scramble for me. So the first thing I wanna do is, is almost bait him. I'm not saying don't try to explode from here, that's fine, it does use a lot of energy. I would suggest you trying to get him to grab your wrist. Everyone's gonna grab your wrist, so gonna grab my wrist. As soon as he does this, I'm gonna start bumping my hips and pushing his head. Not on the back of his head like most people do, we're gonna go to the inside of his ear. This causes a lot of discomfort in his neck. I'm gonna post right here. Now from this position, look how I slam my shin bone to the wall. Very, very simple. Now he's in a position where he has to make a decision. If he stays on my wrist, I'm just gonna get up. So most guys are gonna start to go to your knee. Very common, he grabs your knee, because what he wants to do is he wants to drag your knee back inside and control your hips. So once again, he goes to my wrist. Yep. I bump, I get the inside of his ear, I free up my knee line. Very, very simple. As soon as I feel him start to go for my knee, watch how I place it right against the wall and I put my hand over his hand. So now when he goes to actually control me, it's really hard. With a straightened arm, I have really, really strong control of Sway's left arm. From here, I'm gonna dig my left arm in as an overhook. Watch how I open my knee and I slide my hand through that gap. And you can take the typical wizard where you can grab the inside of your thigh, both work well. Now watch how I start to walk my feet directly behind my butt. So when he drives directly into me, he's driving into empty space. Here and here. From here, we do a basic go behind. I go around his butt, I go under his armpit, and I start to walk my body around. And then from here, we know how to ride from this position. We start working on ground and pound, controlling him, riding in top position. Let's take a look at that again. So this is true uh, MMA mat wrestling. So we're not just trying to stand up. Most of us learn we gotta go, we gotta fight this position and stand up. Nothing wrong with that. But in some cases, you can actually stay on the ground and you can get to a dominant position. So what do we do? We bait him, we bump, head and side position, here and here. Good posture. Now my hips are above his and my head's above his. He's fighting from a deficit now. I go right to his wrist. So when he goes to pull my knee in, unless he's, you know, you all Romero, he's probably not gonna be able to rip your knee. You have good control, you just open your knee, inside thigh. Now watch how both of my legs go straight behind my butt. My shoelaces go down. As he drives into me, I utilize that, that forward momentum to slide my hips away from him. From here, his head is too low. His head's low, I'm just gonna go to his back. So he starts to build his head slightly, but I keep pressure on his upper back. My right hand goes behind his armpit. I go right around his butt. You can also grab the ankle, both work well. And I start to pass my body to the near side. And from this position, we can start working out. Now. All right, guys, let's try it on three. One, two, three. If they can't control your hips, and Damien Maya is known for doing this, is if he can't beat you with the hip, he actually gets his head above your shoulder. See this? When he gets his head above your shoulder, it's, it's, almost, it's almost impossible to escape your right knee out. Now, keep it keep heavy on me. Now, when I go my hips, I'm not being dramatic. It's impossible. And, it, and even worse, if he starts bringing his knees off the ground, like stand up, yeah, you're, you're fucked. So, Let's know this before it happens. Most guys are first gonna start low. As they grab your wrist, watch this. As I feel him build like this, I wanna turn my elbow inside of the shoulder. Without a shirt, and if you're sweaty, this is gonna be easy in the context of an MMA fight. So look how I get my elbow attached to my body. If he's stupid and he keeps going up, what does he do? He gives you your underhook. But what we're looking for is what we call shoulder dominance. So I wanna get my shoulder under his armpit. Okay, in this position, we grab the rotator cuff, we attach the knuckles to our temple. So if he does try to limp our mount and draw away from me, he's not gonna be able to. We get our right knee against the wall, and keeping with the same theme that we've been doing today, it's not as much get ups as mat wrestling, wrestling on the mat for MMA. So I draw my elbow back towards my ribs, I go front headlock, and this is a matter of just turning his head towards the mat and looking to get his scapula uh, pinned to the ground. So I kick my knee down, hit him down, and we can use a lot of the same theory, guys. I'm sitting through, snapping, figure four in, landing on ground and pound. If he blocks, 
create that American lock position. We capture. Great ground and pound options for here. Give you another taste. It's another one. I'm just going to throw this in as a bonus. I, I like this a lot, friendly. We can also start to scissor our legs. What happens when I scissor my legs? This is a big one. This is a good one. I might delete this from the video. <laughs> Look how I kick my right, my right knee back. Like a scissor, watch what happens to his head. As he does this, you can use that to run into shots or step over his head. Catch, step. Unobstructed. Find it. Unobstructed. That's a little bonus, but let's go back to the actual technique at hand that I want to show you. So again, he's on my waist, I have a good A-shaped position. He has hip dominance, he's, he's winning the fight, 100%. He takes the risk. As he starts to build, don't stay wizard. You stay wizard, he gets his head above your shoulder, and you just pin in position, it's a nightmare. So if you feel him build high and not fight your legs, slide your elbow to the inside. It helps to do a little bit of a, a bump with your hips and turn your elbow in, palm to your chest. So go ahead. Like this. Shoulder dominance, underhook, shin to the wall. As he starts to grab my knee, whether he does or doesn't, if he grabs my knee, he's giving me the front head lock. If he stays on my wrist, I'm retracting. Locking the chin, turning his shoulder blade to the neck. Sit through. Trap. Look at all that extra space for us to lock up the crucifix. Here and here, ground and pound. He blocks. American lock. Ground and pound. Or we can get playful and use that scissoring action I showed you. We can time it with sharp elbows. We can run them into elbows. We can catch the head. Kick over as well. Punch from an unlocked wedge. I actually like this quite a bit. As long as you're back healing into your butt, his head is trapped. If you want to get a little bit more jiu-jitsu oriented, you can actually figure four your legs into uh, an actual triangle and land devastating blows from there as well. That'll be our last move back. Let's give it a try on three. One, two, three. Try it out.